All right, we've talked about n behavior of polynomials, but how do we go about actually graphing a polynomial? So in this problem here, we're asked to graph, uh, sketch the graph of f of x is equal to x cubed minus x squared minus 6x. Now, just by looking at this, we do know a few things, right? We know because this is an odd degree and the leading coefficient is positive, that this thing is gonna look something like, uh, something like this. It's gonna start in the bottom left and go to the top right. Okay, the other way that we know to say that now is using limit notation, that the, the limit, the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x, that's going to be infinity, or it does not exist. It goes up forever. Similarly, in like the other, the other direction, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is uh, negative infinity, right? As we have really big negative x values, we'll have really big negative y values. Right, now, we also know from the fundamental theorem of algebra that there are three roots for this polynomial. Um, and, and that's kind of like, right now, we don't really know anything else. It's possible. It's pretty easy to find the y-intercept here if we plug in 0 for x. Um, but the whole, the whole thing is like this x cubed minus x squared minus 6x, this form of this polynomial is not particularly useful to us when it comes to graphing. It helps the end behavior, and that's kind of about it. Um, and so the whole point of going through and being able to factor polynomials was so that we can get it into that factored form, which is very useful when it comes to graphing. So how do, let's just go ahead and factor f of x here. So um, f of x, and we'll factor f of x up here, right? f of x is equal to, uh, looks like everything here has an x in it. So I can take an x out. I'm going to put x squared minus x minus 6. And then uh, this is just a simple one here because that's just a, that is a quadratic that factors to uh, x minus 3 and x plus 2. Okay, so now we have, uh, we have f of x is equal to x times x minus 3 times x plus 2, which applying the zero product property here or saying when does this thing cross the x-axis will tell us that there are three zeros. Okay, there's three real zeros. One of them is at x equals 0. Uh, crosses the x-axis. One of them, x equals uh, 3 is a 0, and x equals negative 2 is a 0. And so the x-intercepts then are going to be at negative uh, 2 comma 0, uh, uh, 0 comma 0, and 3 comma 0. So we can actually go and just put those on the graph right now. We can put the negative 2, 0, 0, 0, and 3, 0. It's also really easy to find the y-intercept here. If we just plug 0 in, uh, if we just say, what is f of 0, right? f of 0 says, when x is 0, what is y? Uh, well, it would be 0 cubed minus 0 squared minus 6 times 0, so 0, which makes sense, too, because if 0, 0 is an x-intercept, then it's a y-intercept also. Okay, and now, really, all uh, the, without doing more work on this, if we're just asked to sketch it, there's no way that we, this is basically what the sketch is going to look like. Okay, it's going to start down. Okay, we know it starts kind of down towards the bottom left. That's what our end behavior says. It's going to cross the x-axis there. And it has to come back and cross the x-axis here. And then it's going to come back and cross the x-axis last time at x equals 3. Uh, and it's going to go up forever. And so that's kind of what the graph of this polynomial is going to look like. Now, there's obviously more to it, right? How high up does this go here and how low down does this go here? What are the, how extreme are those relative uh, maximums and relative minimums, the high point, a low point, also called turning points? That's something to talk about later when we, we really need to use a calculator. The, the best way to do that, the most efficient by far way of doing that is finding, is using a calculator. Right, we did a uh, we did a super basic example of given the polynomial please sketch the graph. What about if we had the graph of a poly uh, graph? If we had the graph, can we find a polynomial? And get another really basic example. And so we kind of what we have to think of here is that f of x is going to equal a times x minus n times x minus m. Now. Think about what this says. This corresponds to one of my x-intercepts. This corresponds to the other x-intercept. And this is how vertically stretched the graph is, that a value there. That's the same a value uh, that we talked about when you multiply something, multiply a function, the outputs of a function by something, it stretches it horizontally vertically. It's the same a from y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, same a. Okay. So 
uh, we can kind of work backwards here. We can look over at this graph and say that we have this point right here, which is 3, 0. And we have this point right here, which is negative 1, 0. Okay, so those zeros, right, at x equals negative 1, x equals negative 1, sorry, let me rewrite that, I have horrible handwriting, x equals negative 1, that corresponds to a factor of x plus 1. And the x equals 3, that corresponds to a factor of x minus 3. Okay, we know this is an even degree polynomial because both ends go up, and it looks to be a second degree polynomial. And we know that a, the, leading, the value of the leading coefficient, is also going to be positive because it goes up. So we can just write what we have so far. Now we've got f of x is equal to a, we still don't really know what a is, times x plus 1 times x minus 3. Now, because we're talking about an x and y coordinate system, when we say f is a function of x, f, uh, function of, f of a function of x, is, it's really y is equal to a times x plus 1 x minus 3, because x is the inputs and y is the outputs. So f of x is the outputs, y is the outputs. So uh, we, if we have any other piece of information on this graph that could be useful to us, like looking at this graph, is there any other piece of information that could be really useful? And yes, there is. There's something here on the y-axis. This y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 3. So this is, and it doesn't need to be the y-axis, uh, the y-intercept that we have. We have a point, x, y, that is on this graph. And this equation here describes all the points x, y on this graph. So if we plug in this specific x, y point that we know, then we can find a. And so that's what we'll do. For, uh, for y, for, we're going to plug in negative 3. That equals a times, and then 0 plus 1, because x is 0. 0 minus 3, x is 0. So we'll have negative 3 equals a times 1 times negative 3. So negative 3 equals a times negative 3. So a is just going to be 1 here. So that helps us by, um, you know, like if a, a could have been anything there, but in this particular example, it was just 1. And so now we can actually write more about what we know about this polynomial. Okay, it's f of x is equal to... 1 times x plus 1 times x minus 3. And then if we wanted to multiply it out, which we don't really have to do, but if we wanted to, we could say that this polynomial f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. And so that uh, that is how we can kind of work backwards, look at what we're given in the graph, and identify what the actual polynomial is. Okay, to add one little layer of complexity here, there's something called multiplicity. And a multiplicity of a zero occurs when you have a zero that is raised to a power greater than one. Here's an example. What does the graph of x minus one quantity squared times x plus two equal? Well, just like in the previous example, we can we can take these, or actually two examples ago, right? We can take this factor and say that if x minus one is a factor, then it cross then it crosses the x-axis at one, or there's a zero at one. But now we say there's a multiplicity as the, the zero of one with a multiplicity of two. And so if I could put this dot right here, we're going to put that there for now, and then come back to it. Okay. And then we have x plus two is also a zero. As, as, sorry, is also a factor, which means x, which means minus two, negative two would be a zero. Now, this is going to be, if we took the x squared from this term and multiplied it by the x in this term, we'd have a third degree polynomial, okay, a third degree, so it's odd, right? And the leading coefficient is positive. So we know that this should do something like this, okay, it should start bottom left, go top right. We know that the limit, we could write it out, the limit uh, as x approaches infinity of f of x would be uh, positive infinity, and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x would equal negative infinity, okay? So what this is going to look like is uh, something like this. So we start in the bottom left. It's going to go through that point, and now what this multiplicity of 2 means is that it's going to just kind of bounce off the x-axis at that multiplicity of 2 and continue going and then, and then kind of go back up. Now we know this happens because a third degree polynomial has three roots. And we see that it only crosses the x-axis twice. 
If we cross the x-axis twice and it were to go through the x-axis for that second time, like this doesn't happen, right? But if it did, we would have to go up again because we know that that's what the end behavior of the, of the polynomial would do. And so what this multiplicity of two lets us do is it kind of bounces off the x-axis. And multiplicities of varying degrees will do different kinds of things on the x-axis. Odd degree multiplicities would do something like this where we kind of it hangs out at the x-axis and kind of goes up. So for a great example of that is y equals x cubed, right? That's a, that has a, a zero of zero, right? The, the x-intercept is zero with a multiplicity of three. It kind of hangs out. So odd degree multiplicities, they kind of, they do cross the x-axis, but they hang out and they kind of flatten out at the x-axis. Even degree multiplicities do this little bounce off the x-axis and the higher the even degree, so like a six, uh, multiplicity of six for six, for example, is going to kind of do like, it's really going to do like this. It's going to really hang out at the x-axis for a long time before it heads out. It's obviously only touches the x-axis the one time, but it's really, it stays really close to it. That's what it looks like on the graph. All right, so let's just kind of jump into the deep end here. If I have this graph here, which is a crazy looking graph, uh, and, and I wanted to know what is the function that, what is f of x? What is the polynomial that describes this graph? Well, we just take take everything step by step uh, and kind of write it down. So first of all, we know that this this is an odd odd degree polynomial. Odd degree. Uh, it, we know that because it goes down the bottom left up to top right. They do different things. And we know the leading coefficient leading coefficient is going to be positive. All right, we know that because did I spell coefficient wrong? Coefficient. Yeah, I did. That's okay. Uh, we know that's going to be positive because it starts bottom left, goes top right. Uh, and we know, we also know several of the zeros. Okay, so we know uh, if if we have a zero right here, right, there's a zero, x equals negative 8 is a zero. That means x plus 8 is a factor. We also know that there's a zero right here, and it looks like that has an even multiplicity. That zero, it bounces off the x-axis. So let's say that that, that has an, a multiplicity of 2. So this would be the x equals negative 4, 0, that's x plus 4 quantity squared. Okay, we also have this 0, remember zeros are x-intercepts, okay, so the x, so the other zeros are going to be, uh, well, let's just do it the same way, we, know we have a 0 at x equals 2, and so that means x minus 2 is a factor, and then we had the 0 at x equals 4, so that means that x minus 4 is also a factor. And so actually we have, we have, this would be 1, 2, 3, well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 5, 5 is odd, so let's just go with this. So we have f of x is equal to a, we don't know what a is, times x plus 8, times x plus 4 quantity squared, times x minus 2, times x minus 4. So now the only thing we're missing here is that a. And again, the only thing we need to find a is any point x, y that's on this graph. Because if we can find a point x, y on this graph, we can plug in for y and x and get the answer. And we do have, and this will t t usually be the most convenient point to plug in, it's going to be the y-intercept. It does not have to be the y-intercept, but that will usually be the most convenient one. In this problem, we have a y-intercept at 0, 4. So that means we're going to plug in uh, 4 for y, and then we don't know a, and then 0 is, is x, right? So it's going to be 0 plus 8 times 0 plus 4 quantity squared plus 0 minus 2 times 0 minus 4. Sorry, I said plus before I meant multiply. Okay, so this would be 4 is equal to a times 8 times 16, that's 4 squared, times negative 2 times negative 4. 4 is equal to a times... I believe this is 1,024 because that's 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th, so the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 2 to the 10th is 1024. Uh, and then if we divide both sides by 1024, we'll solve for a. a is equal to 1 divided by 256, so that's what a is. And now all we need to do is write the polynomial f of x is equal to 1 over 256 times, and then just write what we have before, x plus 8 times x plus 4 quantity squared times x minus 2 times x minus 4. And that right there is the 
is the polynomial that defi that describes the graph we were given. And that seems like a really hard thing to do, but logically we can just take each little piece of information that we see in the graph and, and write what we know about it, like write what it tells us.